How to build a Blackgate Sweet P 5 inch gauge locomotive. This is part 45. Modifying the design of the piston rod glands from using O-rings to Teflon coated yarn packing. This will allow for a simple job to change the gland packing once it's worn out. In the last episode, not only did I drill the hole in the right place that mounts the crosshead guide, I milled the top of the mounting flat and reshaped the casting using a file. Now it's time to turn my attention to the gland design on the piston rod. It's designed to use an O-ring which sits in this recess. Personally, I do not like this idea because changing the O-ring when it's worn out is a bit of a pain. You have to remove the crosshead guide bar, the crosshead, after disconnecting it from the connecting rod, and that really is a long job. What I'm going to do in this episode is change the design. It may be sacrilegious, but never mind. It's easier to work with. In this clip I'm using a steel rule to just check the dimensions of the gland box, and yes, it's looking a lot better and the hole is in the middle. What I'm about to show is a very simple job, but it has to be done twice, once for each side of the engine, and because both sides are identical, I'm only going to show the job on one side. These are the existing glands that came with the engine. I don't understand the logic in the way these glands have been made. The inner part of the gland does not fit in the hole. That's because I don't think it's meant to compress the o-ring when it's in position. The diameter of the hole in the casting is three eighths of an inch. I don't mean the hole all the way through, that's a quarter of an inch, just the end part of the hole where the o-ring goes. I've seen many sweet pea locomotives and I've never liked the gland arrangement. On this locomotive I'm going to change it and make the stuffing gland like a stuffing gland. This means that I will be able to use valve gland packing around the piston rod which will be very easy to fit and remove. For this job I'm using my Myford ML7R lathe because the edges of the chuck are perfectly square unlike my other lathes where they're chamfered. This means I can hold the casting in the chuck using the very shallow register that's been machined to fit in the cylinder. With the part securely fitted in the chuck it's time to start the job. I'm going to use an end mill like this. This is a 3 8 end mill and it will fit in the tailstock chuck. Really though I could use a 3 8 drill but I want to remove as little material from the casting as possible. I'm being gentle with this because the casting is only held by the register. I don't need any cutting lubricant because cast iron cuts beautifully all by itself due to the high carbon content in the metal. In no time at all the job is done and when I look down the hole I can see what is left of the last drilling. This is not a problem at all and by looking at the part I can see that the drilled hole which mounts the guide bar is exactly in the centre. Over now to reprofile in the gland. I fit it into the main chuck using the tailstock chuck. I do this a lot. Once it's pushed into position I just tighten the chuck a bit more. Here I'm just indicating that this part of the gland doesn't fit into the 3 8 of an inch diameter hole in the casting. By using the tailstock chuck to press the gland into the main chuck and then tightening it fully, you can see clearly that the gland is running concentrically. All I have to do now is machine this centre part of the gland down to 3 8 of an inch to fit in the hole. You have to be gentle with certain jobs and this is one of them. Don't forget it's a small part, it's soft metal and the component is held in the chuck just by the edges of the jaws. In this part of the clip I'm reducing the thickness of the flange. It just looked a little bit sort of overscale. This gland has got three holes drilled in it. That's why it's making a funny noise when I turn this part. Back to the outside diameter of the end part. Another cut and we should be somewhere near. The micrometer confirms this but the last thing I want it to be is a tight fit in the hole. There needs to be a tiny bit of clearance. Almost a piston fit. The micrometer now tells me that this piece of metal is exactly 3 8 of an inch in diameter. The job is nearly done, but not quite. I want to be able to use the maximum amount of gland packing in the gland, so I'm going to reduce the length of the part that fits into the casting. I'm only removing about a sixteenth of an inch. And now at this size, the gland looks a lot better. First of all, I clean up the edge using a file. Here I'm just checking the measurement so I can make the other gland exactly the same. 
The last part of the job is to countersink the end. This will consolidate the gland packing inside the gland. When the gland is tightened, the packing will be firmly pushed against the piston rod. And here is the gland on the piston rod, but I haven't put the main casting in place yet. What I need to do first is source some suitable packing. I'm going to use Teflon coated yarn. This is plaited together and needs unpicking, and for this job I'm using the point of my scriber. I need to end up with a couple of very long lengths that can be wrapped around the piston rod and then trimmed off to suit. In the end, I unpicked the entire piece of Teflon coated yarn. Why am I not using graphited yarn? Two reasons for that. Modern graphited yarn I don't think is very good, and old graphited yarn contains asbestos. I've used mainly graphited yarn for many years and I haven't died yet. But that's not the point, I will do eventually. Teflon coated yarn seems to work very well and it's very slippery. By the way, I forgot to video the part where I put some oil into the hole in the gland before I put the yarn in place. This is always a good idea because on the first run it will at least have some oil in the gland. The outer part of the gland is held in place using three 8BA bolts. I'm going to use three stainless steel 8BA countersunk bolts. I'm using a magnet to make sure that they are stainless steel because most of the stainless steel that I use is non-magnetic, including these small 8BA bolts. As I mentioned right at the beginning of this video, this is only one side of the job. I will have to repeat the process for the other side. The clearance is critical. Had I have used the original gland arrangement, it would have fouled the crosshead. This clip shows the crosshead with the piston touching the inside of the front cylinder cover, so everything's okay. As I'm using countersunk bolts, I will be countersinking the outer part of this gland, but not yet. Now I need to fit the crosshead guide to this side, and make sure that everything is in alignment. I will be making some proper slippers for above and below the crosshead guide using a material that is not brass. I would prefer to use gunmetal or phosphor bronze. Time now to see if it works. A bit of oil on the piston rod, and a bit of oil on the crosshead guide. And after rubbing the oil into the crosshead guide, the crosshead, piston and piston rod move in and out very smoothly. The job is slowly developing into something quite good. It's not going to be perfect, but it will be more than adequate. I'm hoping that when I finish this Sweet Pea locomotive it will run well and give many years of enjoyment to the owner, even after I've departed. And on that depressing note I'd like to say stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.